Good morning. Welcome to church this day on a snowy day outside in Zanesville, Ohio. We have a small group gathered together to hear God's word this day and uh, rejoice at the forgiveness he has given to us. We're also thankful for our streaming system that allows many other uh, members and guests to join us for our worship service today. We continue on in our year-long journey through the Bible. Today we will look at the prophet Isaiah and thank the Lord for the peace that he gives to us. In fact, it's perfect peace. We rejoice at that gift today and always. Um, today, we was the plan for today that we would install our officers for the new year of service here at Trinity. We're going to postpone that a couple weeks. We'll do that two weeks from now, hopefully on a less than a snowy day like it is today. But we thank the Lord for all those individuals who are willing and continuing uh, to serve us here at Trinity. Uh, just an announcement to anyone who's at home and watching now, we will have two more services in person later this morning. So if the weather gets better, if you want to come join us, of course, you're welcome to do just that. And today is the last Sunday of January, which means it's our last opportunity for our virtual prayer bowl. And today's prompt is this. We will be praying for people who need direction. Um, oftentimes in life, we have that uh, need ourselves, don't we? Direction, uh, whether it's wisdom, whether it's deciding the right thing to do or the right direction to go. We thank the Lord that he has given us his word that gives us wisdom in those matters. But I think we all know people in our lives who maybe are in points or chapters of their lives that they need direction. And so we'd encourage you to be thinking of them, but not only thinking of them, we'd encourage you to be praying for them today and throughout the week ahead. Thank you for that and your prayers all month long here at Trinity. All right, with that, then let's speak together our verse of the month one last time for the month of January. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. And so we begin then this morning with a word of opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us safely here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity we have to hear your word and rejoice over your gifts to us in Jesus. Lord, watch over those who can't be with us today, those who join us online this morning, uh, those who are staying home, whether because of the pandemic or the weather this morning. Lord, watch over all of us and keep us safe in your love. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so together we begin our service then as we sing together our opening hymn, Christ Be My Leader. congregation to stand as together we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. I invite you to kneel as you are able at this time as we take this moment of silent and personal confession of our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news of God's mercy and grace that is spoken to you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand together. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we hear God's word for us this Sunday morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. The Lord, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 <clears throat> pardon me, through 13. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. 
For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, Will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite the congregation to stand as we hear together the words of our Lord from the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated as we will lift our voices and sing together our hymn of the day, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.
God bless our message and our meditation today on his word for us, that word that comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, as we continue on together through this season of Epiphany here at Trinity. Imagine, imagine looking out over a lake, a lake that is perfectly calm. You may hear a bird call in the distance. You may see a squirrel run by. But, but when you look out on the lake, everything is still. Not a ripple. Not a sound. Just perfect peace. It's a calming thought, isn't it? In our lives here on earth, I think we all wish that we had more moments like that to enjoy. And I say that because for most of us, looking out onto the lake of our life, any moments of peace often seem to be fleeting and quickly going away. A rock is chunked into the lake with a large plop. A speedboat comes out of nowhere and quickly zooms past, leaving a mighty churn in its wake. A storm starts to roll in, and with it, large drops of rain begin to pelt the lake, and you as well. And if the rock, and if the boat, and if the storm weren't enough to pull you out of your moment of peace, well, a pesky mosquito probably can as it bites, bites your neck, and as you slap it in return. Oftentimes, that is maybe a more accurate picture of our life here on earth, isn't it? Any moments or times of peace just don't seem to last that long. You're feeling good. You're feeling healthy, only to slip on ice and break a bone. You're appreciating the recent lack of hostilities in your relationship with your family, only to, to blindly step on a divisive issue and suddenly, you're in the middle of a terrible argument. Things seem to be going well at work, but then, then all of a sudden, you're told that you don't have a job to come into anymore. The list of things in this world that shatter our peace, it really could go on and on, couldn't it? picture we imagine of standing in front of a peaceful lake is one that we may long for, but it's not one that we often get to enjoy in each of our lives. Well, I was thinking about that this week when I read Isaiah 26. For there, in the ESV translation, the subhead for the chapter <clears throat> says this, you keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. I don't know about you, but I'd like to know more about this perfect peace. For in this life, our peace seems to be so fleeting and flimsy instead. Readings from the book of Isaiah are commonly found in our three-year lectionary that we read through at church. In fact, the prophet is featured in our regular readings more than all the other Old Testament prophets combined. This likely has something to do with the richness and the depth of his prophecies throughout Isaiah's 66 chapters. And yet, there is still much of Isaiah's writings that don't appear in our regular readings. And chapter 26 is one such example. But it certainly hasn't been left out because it is lacking in richness or depth. In fact, this chapter is full of truth that points us as Christians to the promise of peace that we have in Christ, both in our present, in our past, but also in our future, too. So for the next few moments, let's devote ourselves to what God would have to say to us this morning from Isaiah 26. In verse 3, Isaiah says this to the Lord. He writes, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, 
because he trusts in you. And then in verse 4, Isaiah speaks this to his reader when he says, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So where does this perfect peace come from then? Can it be discovered through meditation? Can it be found in the self-help aisle at the local bookstore? Is it something that you can recreate if only you have enough time or enough money or enough resources? We know the answer, don't we? We know the answer to each of those questions, and we know that the answer is the same. No. The answer is no. Rather, Isaiah tells us that this perfect peace is something that God gives to us. For the one who experiences this peace is the one whose mind is stayed on God, Isaiah says. The one who trusts in the Lord. The one who has been given faith to believe God's promises. Promises like in Isaiah 43, where the Lord tells his people, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Promises like in Hebrews 13 that reminds us how God has told His people that He will never leave you nor forsake you. Promises like that from Jesus Himself in Matthew 28 when He assured His followers that I am with you always to the end of the age. These promises of God's Word, we are given peace We are given peace right now because we know God is with us. We are given peace in our present. So, do Isaiah's words here then mean that that our lives will always be peaceful? That we will never experience any unrest? That we will never feel the stark splash of cold water on our face from the rock that was thrown into the peaceful lake of life. Well, no, right? That's not what God promises us in His Word. And from our own personal experience, don't we know that that is not what we should expect as part of our broken and fallen world either. But rather, through Isaiah's words, we can trust and we can rest assured that God has given us peace through Jesus through it all, that regardless of the scene playing out before us in our lives, this truth remains sure, that we belong to Him and that He is with us. God has given us His Holy Spirit to keep us in that peace as well. In the explanation to the third article of the Creed, we understand that the Holy Spirit is the one who brings this about in our lives probably remember these words from learning it in catechism class. The Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, and here it is, and kept me in the true faith. See, God hasn't only given us present peace through faith in Jesus, but he also has promised us his Holy Spirit to keep us in that peace and faith Our God has done this for us, and He has done so much more. Isaiah speaks to that in verse 12 of our chapter when he says this, O Lord, You will ordain peace for us, for You have indeed done for us all our works. See, the truth is God has done it all for us. And that gives us peace, even as we think to our past, too. You know, in our youth confirmation class here at Trinity, we teach our confirmands about the two main teachings of God's Word, and you know them, law and gospel. And when we do teach that, I often share this mnemonic device that helps us remember what the law and the gospel each say. You know, the law always says do. It tells us to do this. It tells us not to do that. It shows us what we have failed to do in the past. 
the law never lets up. The law never stops. In short, the law issues us demand upon demand upon demand. Demands that we will never be able to complete or do ourselves. No matter what we have done, the law will always find us more that we still need to do. But while the law always says do, the gospel always says done. For it shows us what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. It shows us how Jesus has lived the perfect life in our place that you and I never could on our own. It shows us how Jesus died on the cross to pay the sacrificial price of all of our sins. It shows us how Jesus rose from the dead to defeat death and its power for eternity and to give us the promise of life forever in Him. That all is gospel truth. That's what God has done for you in Christ Jesus. So you see, Jesus truly has done all that was needed for our salvation. And because He has, we can rest assured. We can be confident. We can be at peace. That no matter what we have done or left undone in our past, we can be at peace that our salvation is secure in Jesus both now and for all time. So we have peace through faith in Jesus that he's with us in our present. And we also have peace about our past because we are reminded that God has done it all for us to take away our sins. But you know, we also have peace in knowing that in Jesus, our future, our future is secure too. You know, while our past and our present can often seek to attack our peace, while it can often bring us anxiety, I believe that sometimes thinking of the future can upset us even more. The future likely causes us this anxiety as sinful humans because it is so unknown. We don't know what lies ahead. It's almost like we're flying blind in life, and that doesn't make us feel good. And yet, for the Christian, God gives us peace even as we look to the future. Peace in faith in what He has told us will one day come. For though we don't know what our future holds in this life, in faith we do know what will happen when Jesus returns. And in verse 19, Isaiah speaks to that ultimate promise of peace and hope that we have because of Jesus, as Isaiah speaks these words to the people of God. The prophet says, Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy, for your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Isaiah, the prophet, even so many years before Jesus would come to earth as a baby in Bethlehem, Isaiah the prophet tells us what will happen in the future. That from our graves, Jesus will raise us when he comes on the last day. That the earth will give birth to its dead, and because of Jesus, we will rise never to die again. And that is why we can say that God gives us his perfect peace. Peace that we experience even now in the present through faith. That no matter what we go through, our Savior has got a hold of us. But also peace that assures us that no matter what our past holds, we have been made right with God. Not because we are righteous, but but because God has carried out all our works on our behalf. We also have peace that promises us that our future is secure in Jesus, for we have the assurance that we will one day rise to new and eternal life when our Savior returns. So that's the peace that Isaiah speaks of. That's the peace that our God has given to us. 
And it's a peace that can't be shattered or disturbed. It's a peace that no storm or cloud can ever take away. It's a peace that is perfect and always will be in Jesus Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God that he has given us that perfect peace. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Having heard God's word proclaimed this morning, let us together, whether we are here or at home, let us confess together our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I invite you to stand as we do that together this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated at this time. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we will postpone our installation of officers a couple weeks. We'll have that on February 14th. And so at this time, then, let's go before our Lord in prayer. And even though I just ask you to sit down, I'll, I'll ask you to stand up and we'll pray together this morning. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Trinity, you are God of gods and Lord of lords. Truly there is no God but you alone. From you and from your Son, Jesus Christ, are all things. And so we pray that you'd reveal the saving knowledge of Christ's truth to us and all the world, that loving you and one another together we may be known by God. Lord, in your mercy... O Lord, our God, whose voice was heard at Sinai, whose authority was made manifest in Jesus, the prophet greater than Moses, send faithful preachers into your harvest who will be diligent to listen to your word and speak it faithfully in your name. Preserve us from false prophets who would lead us away from your truth and give us ears to hear gladly the saving words of Christ. Lord, we also pray for those congregations we walk together with in our church body, Today, by name, we pray for Alive in Christ Lutheran Church in Columbia, Missouri, and especially for the requests that they share with us uh, as they navigate through the challenges of this pandemic, as they um, carry out their year of following Jesus at their congregation. We also pray that God would reveal his vision, vision and direction for them and their congregation in the weeks and months and years ahead and they request that through all they do, that the gospel would be proclaimed in their congregation and community. Lord, we pray that all this would be so for your glory and for the blessing of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, guard our families and our homes, build them up in love, support parents and grandparents in their tasks of instructing their children and grandchildren in the faith. Strengthen those whose faith is weak, and make us bold to forego convenience and security to attest to the truths of our most holy faith with heart and action. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we pray that you'd give health and success to our president, to our governor, to all legislators and judges, and to all who serve for our governance and protection. Make them high in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in their duty. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, cast out unclean spirits and taught with great authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. And so we pray that, Lord, through Jesus' power, that these individuals who are going through a time of need, we pray that they would receive healing. We pray for Dennis and Stephen, Sue, Phyllis, Mary, Tracy, Julie, Ed, Sandy, Jean, Margaret, 
Pippi, Ann, Gary, Bill, Jim, Myra, Mary Ann, Freya, Lynn, Carolyn, Libby, Billy, Austin, Steve, Joyce, Don, Daryl, and Linda, Jennifer, Bob, Danny, Jeff, Amanda, Patricia, Richard, Jacob, Emily, Myla, Payne, Wesley, Shirley, Tom, Sharon, Rachel, Jamie, and all others who are in need. Lord, we pray that you would grant these individuals healing and peace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also thank you for those who celebrate. We thank you for the gift of baptism that you bestowed on Malin and Georgiana this past week. Lord, we pray that you'd continue to lead them and guide them in their lives, to watch over them and to lead them to know about your love for them through Jesus, their Savior. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for those this day, Lord, who we have added to our virtual prayer bowl, those who we know and love and care about who need direction in their lives. Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom and show them the way and the path to go. Lord, hear the names that we name silently in our hearts now that we have added to our prayer bowl this day. For these individuals and all who are in need of direction, Lord, we pray that you would guide them. Lord, in your mercy, all these things, Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, grant to us for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And so together we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are saved by Christ. Go then in his peace and with his blessing upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We close our service then as we lift our voices together and sing the song, Oh, that I had a thousand voices.